uh, and I walked in there, who uh, is my current coach at, at this time that I've been with ever since day one. Raphael Elwinger was the black belt from Brazil. He was a jiu-jitsu coach there, and uh, I started training with him, man, and we started fighting amateur, slowly went pro, and worked our way up. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, that's a, like a life full of it. Um, honestly, so you've been on since the, uh, <laughs> you've been there since the the beginning, almost UFC fan at least. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. From, I mean, back from the Hoist Gracie. I mean, I wasn't necessarily looking forward to like watching those fights because I was I was a kid. But I remember, um, you know, my parents would go to the Blockbusters back when Blockbuster was a thing, and I don't even know if you guys remember Blockbuster, but. Oh, yeah. I think we caught the tail end. (laughs) Yeah. So that's back before the UFC was actually on TV. You couldn't really watch it on TV or anything. Before they hit pay-per-view, you have to just, once the fights happen, you know, a week or two afterwards, you can go rent them at Blockbuster. And uh, I I remember remember seeing those aisles. So, yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, So going back to tough, how was it working with somebody like Michael Chandler as your coach? Did you – Obviously, with a short amount of time period, I'm not sure if you were able to learn a lot of technique or anything, but probably more mentality. What did you learn from Mike? Um, You know, I learned a lot, man. Like, Mike's such a great coach, whether he he likes being a coach or not. You know, he says uh, coach is not for him, but he's definitely a damn good coach. I can tell you that. And, uh, yeah, man, I actually I did learn a lot from Mike. You know, the, one of the main reasons I wanted to be on Mike's team because I wanted to I wanted to get more – up to speed on wrestling for MMA. And uh, I felt like he does a very good job at it, and he did a very good job teaching that. Yeah, it kind of showed out with that victory, right? Yeah, man. I, and I knew Austin's tough, man. I spent a lot of time with Austin. Very good guy. Good friend of mine, you know, still even after this fight. But, uh, you know, I knew how tough Austin was. And, and he's not a small lightweight either. I might be on a little bit smaller side for the lightweight division, right? But... He's a legit lightweight man. He's big, he's strong, and he can wrestle. And I felt like I was wrestling just fine with him. Yeah, it it looked like it. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, Speaking of the lightweight division, you know, that's kind of historically just been, you know, one of the toughest divisions to get into. You know, and winning the Ultimate Fighter, you're kind of just being tossed right into the mix, you know, with – you know, not obviously you have the preparation going in winning the ultimate fighter, but you know, where do you think that's going to help you stack up with all the other people in the lightweight division? Um, honestly, man, I really think that I stack up well with everybody. You know, of course, uh, Makachev being the, the biggest threat to everybody just because how good he really is. But, um, I don't know, man, I, I think I stack up well with everybody, you know, um, We'll just see how that goes. We'll just see who the UFC gives me. Hopefully they give me somebody that matches up well with my style because what I've been telling everybody, like, you know, you're not going to get an easy fight in the UFC. Those guys are in the UFC for a reason. But you do get guys that maybe match up well with your style. And um, for that reason, it's not an easy fight, but it's a good fight for you. Yeah, I got you. Um, So you called out Patty Pimblett after your fight. I think we both me and Alex would love to see that fight. Uh, it'd be good for your uh, notoriety. He's a you know he has a big following and everything. Uh, if you were to get that fight, when do you think when do you think that would happen? When are so, you ready um, to fight? I mean, I can fight tomorrow. I, I literally took no damage in the fight, no injuries in the fight. You know, um, of course, I'm a little sore and I still got a few things healing up from training camp. Right? Maybe maybe I got a few injuries from from the training camp. I had a really hard training camp, but um, realistically, I was, since we went through this show, man, that was fighting twice in 10 days, being there for six weeks, training every day, two times a day, Um, and then the whole lead up and the preparation for the finals, training every day, sometimes two times a day, Um, I kind of wanted a little bit of a break and hoping that maybe... December, you know, everybody was hoping Connor and Chandler was going to fight on that December 16th card. Um, so I was kind of targeting that card, kind of get on the card with those guys. Whether they fight on the card or not, I think that's a good date for me, December 16th. If not, maybe the first of the year. Okay. Yeah, that that sounds great. Yeah, December, it looks like they're actually trying to 
kind of line up those as we speak. Um, outside of the UFC, you know, a little bit. You, you like other sports? You like football at all? Oh, absolutely, man. Look, this couldn't have fell out at the perfect timing because now, you know, I get a little break. And that's one of the main reasons I didn't want to take a fight next month just because, man, NFL is about to kick off the season. I'm a huge Saints fan. I play a lot Let's of fantasy go. football. So, yeah, man, I'm excited for this football season. And I get a little break now. I, you know, all this weight's lifted off my shoulders. And I sit back, enjoy being an ultimate fighter winner and, and watching this year's football season. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And what do you think your, uh, your favorite, you know, post-weigh-in meal is? Favorite you post-weigh-in? Know, yeah, you know, you got that freedom to kind of just – you know, put put back on the pound. You know, start start yeah, beefing yeah. up, getting ready to fight. What do you want to put in first? Man, I love a good Alfredo pasta, chicken or shrimp or a Cajun Alfredo pasta is always my favorite. Okay, that's fair. It's hard to go wrong with that. You like to good fish? Carbs. Need those good carbs back in your body. Um, oh yeah. But I mean, uh, I I don't eat bad. Like back in my earlier days, soon as yeah. I'm done weigh-ins, man. I, I would freaking eat anything. I would eat bad. Didn't matter. Now I, I'm still after my diet or after my weigh-ins, I still stay on my diet. I still eat clean. And, uh, you know, I felt like that's definitely helped me over the last couple of fights. And yeah, I'm sure it's a lot easier. To, uh, I'm sure it's a lot easier to stay in shape and everything. If you just kind of keep clean eating though. Yeah. N- sure. Never go too crazy. Yeah. I and mean, that's what I tell my guys. That just look, man, you're like, you just dieted for the last six weeks. What's one more day? Just keep keep on your diet. You don't need to go put no bad stuff in your body. Yeah, that's fair. You can always find good, you know, good tasting, healthy food at the end of the day. Yeah, for sure. All right. Now, outside, you know, once, maybe not even once your uh, MMA career is done, but like in tandem with it, you know, what, what do you want to do outside of MMA? You know, a lot of people – you know, like yourself, you, you kind of have dual responsibilities going on. You know, half of your life's a fighter. Half of yourself is trying to figure out how to make money, you know, once you're not fighting. You know, what what are your thoughts? What do you want to do outside of the MMA? So uh, me and my wife, we actually own two Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mixed martial arts schools. Um, and, you know, for the last couple of years, we've been putting a lot of work, a lot of time in our gyms, growing our gyms. Right now, they're doing really well. We have a lot of students. I have a lot of fighters out of my gym, amateur fighters, professional fighters. Um, you know, my kids train every day. My son fights. So um, I just put a lot of time in to training all those guys, man. You know, I'm making sure they're ready for their fights they have coming up. And, uh, you know, just running my gyms and keep on growing my gyms. Are they in uh, Denham Springs? So I got one gym in a meet Louisiana and okay. I moved to Franklinton, Louisiana a few years ago, whenever um, I actually bought the gym in Franklinton from my head coach, Raphael. Uh, I just took over one of his, one of his gyms. He sold it to me and I decided to move out to Franklinton, Louisiana for the school systems for my kids. So me and my wife found a house, bought it, and we've been steady, putting a lot of time, a lot of effort into that Franklinton location and, and growing it. That's awesome, man. We're we're both uh, based out of Lafayette, so we're, we're not too far oh, from you. A couple hours yeah, yeah. from you. Yep. So, um, with that, what do you think is the like most challenging thing about being a professional fighter, UFC fighter, just professional? You know, you're talking to kids, teaching kids. You know, what's one of those things that you know you tell them to help push them forward when they're facing their adversities? Just make sure to keep that motivation. You know, you got to have the motivation. You got to have the drive. Um, this is something that you absolutely 100% have to train for. If you got, if you have something coming up, man, you know, you got to put the time. You got to put the effort into it. You can't just sit back and wait for that time to come and not train. So that, that's one of the biggest things. And even if you don't have time to train, you got to find the time to train. You got to do everything you can to make sure 100% you're ready and in shape and ready to fight. I guess that translates to translates to other walks of life as well. You know, not just fighting, but, you know, being prepared for everything you're going out to do on, you know, whether it's an interview with a fighter or going out and fighting somebody. Yeah. hundred percent. Awesome. 
Well, look, we don't want to, uh, you know, take up too, too much time. I know you're busy. You want to go celebrate, enjoy your stuff. Also, you know, we're trying to knock out our first interview at the same time. <laughs> uh, but we want to thank you for coming on, man. Uh, it's been a pleasure. We hope to see you, you know, crush some people in the UFC uh, respectfully, of course. And uh, enjoy that victory, brother. Yeah, man, for sure. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. I'm glad I'm your first guy. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's do it again. Let's do it, man. Who that? Who that? Let's go. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, man. Thank you, guys.